today we are at Mapperton. This is the nation's finest manor house and our family home. Do you know, Mapperton has not always been the Montague family home. In fact, there was a much larger, almost castle-like home in Cambridgeshire called Hinchingbrook. And unfortunately, that house was lost in 1955. It was actually sold by my husband's grandfather after the Second World War. And the family, and I'm including myself in this, we feel really sad about this because that house had been in the family since 1627. In fact, nine Earls of Sandwich lived at Hinchingbrook. But Hinchingbrook actually wasn't alone. So after the Second World War, so many historic houses were either sold or demolished because they couldn't afford the upkeep of these houses. The cost of, of maintaining these houses was back then and still is today extraordinary. I'm really excited though because I'm actually going to be heading up to Hinchingbrook to see what's happened to it and to look at the fabric of the building and also to look at the history that's still left there. But before I do that, I'm going to meet with my father-in-law and we're going to go through some of the archives because he grew up there. That's where he spent his childhood. And then of course he moved here in 1955. But I want to find out what it was like to actually grow up at Hinchingbrook, at like a castle. And then of course the loss of Hinchingbrook and how he felt about moving here at Mapperton. When I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles, and manors, and stately homes as much as I do, please join me as I head off to visit some of Britain's most spectacular historic homes. The Montague family have always had a connection with Dorset and enjoyed its remote and beautiful landscape. And so it was perhaps a natural choice to move here when in 1955, the family were forced to leave the ancestral home Hinchingbrook House in the east of England. I'm really excited to get stuck in, John, as to your memories of Hinchingbrook before we head off um, to see the house itself. But I don't know if I've ever shared this with you. Uh, this was when I was visiting Rockingham Castle and your aunt Faith had written this and this was her memories of, of E.M. Forrester, but in particular of Hinchingbrook. So I just wanna quickly read this to you and then we can kind of go uh, back. She says, after lunch, my father asked me to drive our guest over to Hinchingbrook and show him around the house. So this, by the way, was uh, December 1955. So this was written after Hinchingbrook was vacated. Hinchingbrook was a quarter of a mile down the drive. We drove through the great Gothic main archway and pulled up at the front door. During the war, Hinchingbrook was a hospital. And after the war, my brother, your father, to whom the estate had been transferred, found himself forced partly for economic reasons and much to his regret to sell the property. In 1962, the Huntington County Council bought the house for a comprehensive school. But in December 1955, when Faith went, the great house was empty and deserted. She then continues to say, before entering the house, I took Forster onto the terrace where Charles I and Oliver Cromwell once fought as boys. We stood on the terrace steps and admired the great semicircular bow window. We then wandered across the lawn to see the medieval nunnery and from there into the main house. It was dark and lonely. 
but beautiful. Every room shuddered, and we looked at the furniture and pictures by electric light. Some of the furniture had been taken away, but most of the family portraits, the Hogarth, Lilies, and the Van Dykes, were still hung on the walls. Our tour took an hour, and Forrester had not said a word. Then he rounded on me explosively. To abandon it like that, to leave it empty, just to clear out what will happen to all its art treasures. He was desperately concerned. Houses are important, you know. A house gives security. It is an anchorage. And I think, obviously, you'll remember that period in 1955 when Hinchingbrook was sold because you grew up there. Well, your childhood that, was spent there. That is a really sad description. It's making me sad right now because I was at boarding school or in London with my mother so much of the time that I think a big historical event like the emptying of a house simply hadn't occurred to me. I mean, we had a new house down in Dorset and all the excitement was forward at that time. And I think, you know, I can only now feel a bit of emotion about that. So John, there's a lot of um, Hinching Brook <laughs> sort of archive material here, but can I just ask what is, you know, growing up there, what was your earliest memory? And did you, did you think it was, if I was growing up there, I would think it was a castle. Did you think growing up that you were living in a castle? Well, I mean, it, it is really a castle now because successive generations keep improving it and making it more comfortable until my father comes and knocks down half of it over here on this wing. But my memory is mostly about the early morning when I was maybe 12, 10 or so. And I used to pick uh, primroses and sell them to the public because the great thing was stand at the gate and <laughs> entice the public. You see, it was quite a business. I have a photograph here of my, my mother sitting at the seat of custom. That was unusual because she was divorced practically by then. <laughs> and myself on the climbing over the, uh -huh. uh, the bar, over the entrance. And we used to collect um, half crowns and two and six and sixpence for children. Right. That's what it was. And these are all your siblings. Kate's there. Yep, Kate's there. Sarah is the tall one. And, and yes. another one. So I can see I'm about six or seven there. This but is a set of postcards. Right. That were sold at the gate as well. But this is wonderful of the dining room. And this is, is this where you would have your meals? Breakfast, lunch, and oh, dinner? Oh, yes. And there's there another photograph of that too. Here we are. Wonderful. Oh. So that, that's, I'm not in this one, but my older sisters, my mother and a school friend, and my father carving at the side table. I mean, that's all very familiar to me. And what was the room in the house, do you, would you say, that you spent the most time in? Oh, was well, there, we were in the nursery upstairs, or the corridor along to the nursery. We weren't particularly wanted on the ground floor. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I, I can go back and see if the mangle is still there in the room next to the kitchen and the nursery. You know, it won't be. <laughs> right, right. And, and when you were growing up there, do you remember, because, you know, from everything that I've read, uh, doing my master's in country house studies, you know, these houses were well equipped with staff. Did you have uh, quite a lot of staff or not so much? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had 20 before I was born and we were down to about three. <laughs> we had a, a French governess who perhaps didn't count for my two younger sisters. At the pinnacle was uh, George Small, the butler. I've got a photograph of him here, and he, he's doing something very uncharacteristic, which is putting down linen, probably maybe protecting something. Right. But he was my great friend, uh, because he was the only one who would tell me what was happening. So I really did get very close to George Small. And then many, many years afterwards, I was visiting his wife and so on. So How? we had a very small number looking after us, I think. Can I just see that photo really quickly? Because what's wonderful is, of course, it's you know wonderful to see George here, but I recognize this chair and I recognize this painting of um, Martha Ray and I recognize um, 
uh, this Hogarth painting here. So, you know, the collection as much as possible was then of course taken uh, from Hinchingbrook to here at Mapperton. I, in fact, I recognize these wall lights, I'm certain. <laughs> that we well, they all came, absolutely. We, we took everything we could, but a lot was sold simply because you couldn't get it all into this house. And there were things which my father paid less attention to, which we are now missing. You know, some of the little details, like the fireplace implements and so on. So the house was left vacated in 1955. And then what happened to Hinchingbrook? Well, you know, going back to Mr. Small, the butler, he's probably laying the dust sheets. It's a very sad moment. I wasn't really there half the time, so I don't, I don't remember that. But what was actually happening was that the county council finally agreed to pay because we had a, an American um, religious foundation that came and put up partitions everywhere. We thought they were going to buy it and then I think he died and everything was derelict. Uh, right. The sprinkler system collapsed, you know, the water streaming out of the ceiling. Uh, it was a very catastrophic moment and thank goodness that's persuaded the county council to come up with money. And after some vital restoration work, in 1970, Hinchingbrook became a school, which it remains today. The house survived at a time when so many others were demolished. And for that, we are forever thankful. I hope you are having as much fun watching these episodes of American Viscountess as I am making them. It is so important to bring history to life and to celebrate these wonderful places. But we need your help as we rely entirely on the support of our patrons who help cover the costs of production. Please do join our community of supporters by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. Here you'll get early access to all the episodes as well as a lot of other behind the scenes benefits. I really look forward to seeing you there. I'm really looking forward to going back to Hinchingbrook with you. I can't wait, we'll go there together. We're gonna to be, Kate, your sister is going to be joining us. Well, she'll have some memories. They'll be not the same ones. No, they'll not be the same ones. No. But how does that make you feel, you know, going there and, and we're going to film this together? It's very exciting. I'm really looking forward to it. Yes, yeah. marvellous. I'm sure it will evoke some other memories as well. So I can't wait to explore those with you. Well, we'll put all this into reality. I'll tell you one thing that hasn't changed. The cold, <laughs> the wind. And then suddenly we'd see a member of the public coming quick, rush to here. Two and six, please. That was the kind of thing. The strongest, earliest memory I have of this room is the telephone ringing. Julia is born, 1947. This was our younger sister. Right. And I, that's absolutely crystal clear. I was only four. I think it's extraordinary. And I think seeing the two of you together, brother and sister, and reminiscing, and it's, that's what sweet. life is about. You are sweet. So. Julie, we're going to look at the archives and the photographs and we're going to relive again and again, <laughs> yes, I know. Yes, we will. But being able to, for me to spend time with both of you is really special, mm -hmm. so thank you both. Thank you. To really get a sense of what it was like when the family lived there, my father-in-law and I look at some of the old films of Hinchingbrook from the family archives. I haven't watched this in years. Yeah. So it'll be interesting. I saw it once, once upon a time, but I haven't, can't remember it. Here we go. Wonderful. Now, this was taken by my father on the roof of Hinchingbrook. On the roof? That's the famous um, express train to Scotland. <gasps> How wonderful. <gasps> and there oh. is the south side, beautiful um, there bay is, window. There is the castle. It really is a castle. It has a gatehouse. Look at that fantastic gatehouse. That's become a busy road now, but it was quite slow at that time. <laughs> On the way down to Brampton, where Samuel Pepys lived. Yes. Now look at this extraordinary roof. How is the roof these days? We're not so sure, are we? I don't think the roof <laughs> is very good. No. Now that's the park. Lots of familiar sights. There is the courtyard, where all the cars were chauffeured. Oh, goodness, now, now this who is, is this? an event. This is a reenaction of something. That looks like my sister being picked up. 
That's my grandmother oh, on the left. That's my, your American grandmother, Alberta. Yeah, you can not see very well, but there, yes, moving in the background. Yes, there my she is. My grandfather. And there's Alberta right there, yes. Fantastic. Extraordinary S thing to have this still now. Right. Now this, now, is, this is one of my cousins, and those are my two sisters following. <gasps> and are you in the pram? Well, I haven't. Got a very clear mm. image. That's my aunt Faith. That's my grandmother over there. American grandmother, <laughs> I always have to say. Yes. Fantastic. Look at Everybody how Everybody getting up for the photo. It's my mother. <gasps> yes. There we are. That's a nice shot of her. Yeah, it really is. And oh, that's goodness. My two sisters again and cousin Drew, his name was. How? And that's, that's your mother. mother. And she had to sit at the gate and collect money from the public. So this is this right here is the in the gatehouse. That's that the right? gatehouse exactly ah, where the public came in. Where the public and came that's in. That's grandpa, grandma. Oh, Alberta, yes. With something in her hat, rather cheerful. Now this is my mother. Oh, I'm glad this is this sequence. It's in the rose garden, and um, she's preparing for something. And who is she with? She's with one of the gardeners. I can't right, tell you which right. one. It's before me. <laughs> and wasn't she, can I just, wasn't there something about your mother written that because she wore trousers, she was one of the first sort of aristocratic females to wear trousers at an event. Is that no, right? No, but oh. specifically at the Royal Yacht Squadron in Cowes. <laughs> you weren't allowed to wear trousers. And she woman. did. And you, in fact, weren't allowed on the lawn, the main lawn. And did she do that as well? And she did that too. <laughs> Well done to your mother. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Well, it's around, oh, can we tell what date that is? End of the 30s. Oh. There's a rose garden, which is now being restored, I think. Yes, it's, I don't think it looks like that, does it? Well, I hope so, <laughs> not quite. Oh. Well, there's mum again, getting ready. I didn't know she was good at decoration. And look at that wave now. Now, it may be that I'm in this one. Oh. Yes, that's me oh. and, that's and, and my sister Kate, me in a jacket. Uh, I don't know what game this is. It might be croquet. Oh, goodness, that went too fast. Oh, I think we're going to have to find more of that um, footage if we can. Or better yet, we get to go up there. So I've only been to Hinchingbrook twice. But um, I'm looking forward to having a tour around with you and when Morrison we go Kate. next, a few days time. Yeah, in a few days and time. I have a feeling a lot of memories will be flooding back. I'm sure they around. will. You know, I was actually surprised when I was having a conversation with my father-in-law that he didn't have a lot of emotional attachment to Hinchingbrook. I, I actually think I might have more emotional attachment, but that's just the American in me because I, I love history and I, I find that there's a bit of sadness there as well. But I think, you know, this is his home. This has been his home, you know, since he was 12 and he was able to detach from Hinchingbrook. And, and I think that's also the way that things were at that time. So many houses were sold and demolished during that period that it was almost normal. So you, you had to detach, if you like. I think it'll be interesting to see how John reacts actually when we get to Hinchingbrook and when we go through the rooms and we see the carvings and we see the places where he hid as a young boy and where he played on the lawn and perhaps that will conjure up some more emotion and feelings that perhaps um, might come out then. I do think I will definitely get emotional, but listen, I'm American. I get emotional about most things, but in particular, you know, my last name is technically Hinchingbrook, and this is the house where nine other Countesses of Sandwich and Viscountesses of Hinchingbrook once lived. I'm one of the first to not live in the Montague ancestral home. So for me, it is a little bit emotional, but I also am really looking forward to it as well. <laughs>